Hi there, I'm Andy Malone. I'm a Microsoft MVP as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. You know, I've been working with SharePoint Online for a long time. Originally starting as a project in 2001 called the Digital Dashboard Project, the product uh, just mushroomed over the years and became an indispensable part of collaboration. Obviously, its move to the cloud has had a major impact on how we collaborate and how products have evolved, such as Microsoft Teams, Office 365 groups, and so on. But the actual core knowledge behind SharePoint for some people still remains a bit of a mystery. So in this week's episode of All You Need to Know, we're going to unravel it. Let's take a look. So to get started with SharePoint Online, what we do is from the admin center, I'm going to go into the uh, from the main portal rather. I'm going to go into the Microsoft 365 uh, admin center and um, we're going to take a look at SharePoint Online from both a user perspective, but also getting started as an administrator as well. So I'm going to come down into the admin menu, first of all, and I'm going to come down into SharePoint. So here in SharePoint, um, we are, this is the SharePoint Admin Center. And what I want to do is I'm just going to expand my teams, and uh, sorry, sites, and I'm gonna go into active sites here. Now you can see that we have um, lots and lots of different sites here. Um, and um, do remember that when you create a Microsoft 365 group, you also create a team uh, site as well and uh, you can choose whether you want it to be a, a Microsoft Teams site and you can tell that some of these are Microsoft uh, Teams and so on. Now I've got a group here uh, and it's called uh, Sales Team so let's just have a quick look at this site and what I'm going to do is just open up this page from uh, an end user perspective. So here is my this is my basic SharePoint uh, site again you've got a menu down the left hand side here I can create a new what do I want to create a new document a document library this is what we call a folder in SharePoint you can create a page uh, a link an app of course you can add an app to the page if you've got the rights to do that um, so that's uh, in terms of administering the site um, in the days past, you might have need special customized software. Nowadays, of course, you don't. You just simply everything's online. You can manage everything as it is. Now, as I hover over these areas here, you can see that part of the area is becoming um, uh, highlighted. And this is what we call a uh, web part in SharePoint. And there are thousands of web parts that you can bring in here. And again, you can just move these around and change them around and you can you can insert new uh, components here as well. Um, everything is WYSIWYG, of course, so you can just uh, change the text, add the fonts, add columns, pictures and whatever. At the end of it, if you're happy, of course, the, what you can then do is you can then say, I want to go ahead and republish that page and it's instant okay so that's it really kind of the basics from uh, and an kind of an end user type perspective here now most team sites every team site of course will typically have a conversation and I mentioned that this is a Microsoft 365 group so you can see that it uh, opens up in Outlook so of course everybody gets a shared uh, inbox there as well um, the other things that you get you also get a shared document library OneDrive um, you get a planner uh, and so on so back into the properties of the admin center um, I'm, I've selected the uh, website and you can see that I've got a number of tabs here now the website was recently updated so we'll look at some of the changes here so um, general just gives me some general information. I can go in as you saw and look at the site. Um, you also have something in SharePoint called a hub association. So when you create a hub, um, basically it's kind of like a top level folder and any kind of sub sites that you create or associate with that hub, they will also have 
the same menus, they'll share the same layouts and so on. It's a really very clever way of, of designing. And more than that, um, you can detach a site from a hub and then reattach it to a different hub. It's so flexible. Um, in fact, you know, I think what we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and I think I'll actually create a new site just to show you. So I'm going to create a brand new site and it says, OK, do you want to do a team site or do you want to do a, com uh, a communication site? Other options, there's different templates that you can use. For the purpose of this little demo, I'm going to go ahead and create a team site. So it's asking me for my team site name and I'm going to call this my Seattle uh, Coffee uh, team site okay so this is my oops what else if I could spell it correctly of course uh, okay Seattle coffee uh, team site okay um, <clears throat> now you can see it says okay do you want to put a email address in as an owner uh, or who is the owner I've got a user here called Megan so I'm gonna say that Megan is the owner of this particular uh, site um, ignore that at the moment. Okay, so you can also choose a language. So do you want to choose a different language? Again, I'm going to choose just English. <clears throat> and you can also specify whether you want the site to be private. So only the members of the site can see it or whether it's public. So anyone in the organization, including guests who might have access, can also see this site. Um, I am going to uh, I'm going to say I'll make it public for the purpose of the demo um, and again I'll click on submit so when I'm happy um, I will just um, oh, okay that didn't go in let me just add in an email address let me add in Megan so click on this and finish okay so you can now see, it just takes a few moments uh, and we now have the Seattle team site. So again, I can go into that and straight away, you have got that uh, team site here. Now, the other things that you can see here, this is really nice because um, obviously you can imagine if, if a lot of people are creating websites from, a, from an administration perspective, the last thing that you need is a website that's not used very often. So now in SharePoint, you can see when it was created, um, who it was created by, uh, you can move along and you can, there's other uh, fields here as well. And you can customize this and you can see the last time it was used, for example, here. So if you find that there's a website that you've not used for years, it's a great way to clean uh, things up. Now, the other thing that you can also do is I can select a, a, a website. Uh, I can say, for example, here I've got uh, the New York website, the New York team website. And I can say, you know, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of maybe getting rid of that. Um, so I can go ahead and I can delete that site completely, including all of its content. So this this site has now that will now go. And what will happen is uh, that will then appear in the uh, deleted items here. Uh, now, the nice thing is that will stay there for 30 days. Then it will go into a secondary recycle bin for up to 93 days total. OK, once it's in here, um, you can see uh, just refresh the page. So just reload this page. It can take a few moments to come through. Um, so that will eventually come through. And again, if you want to bring that back, select it and then just simply restore that site back. And um, that's the easiest way to, to do that. Um, in terms of settings, um, well, first of all, um, just going back to my website. Um, so if I select the, sorry, I'll select the, yeah, which one I will select. Um, yes, sorry, Seattle. I will select Seattle and <laughs> up here you can set permissions. So we have different sets of permissions in 365. So you can have um, owners, so managers, if you will, and you can have um, contributors, so members. And members can be both internal and external outside of your organization. 
Um, so you can assign owners and uh, additional admins here uh, if you want to. Now, um, as part of Microsoft 365, I've done videos in the past and I've talked about role-based admin and role-based admin includes SharePoint administrators. So rather than having a global admin to manage everything, you might have dedicated SharePoint administrators for this. Um, okay, in terms of this hub that I mentioned, um, what I can do is I can choose Oops, sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing there. I can choose, is, it, is this site going to be a hub site? And do I want to associate this site with another hub site? So you can attach it to a hub site, you can detach it, you can move it. It's so flexible, okay? The nice thing about a hub site, as I've mentioned, is it shares menus, templates, permissions. It rocks, seriously, it's awesome technology. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, probably one of the most important things that you can ever learn about SharePoint is how to share with external users, okay? And in previous videos on my channel, I looked at guest users. You might want to look at the Azure Active Directory videos um, and conditional access. Um, but here I can click on to the sharing and you'll notice it's the sharing for this particular page of this particular website. And in essence, we have four options here. Now, the reason why this option is grayed out is because it's disabled at the tenant. So for everyone. So you basically have four settings. So the least restrictive is everyone or anyone. Now, the problem I have with that is if you've got a user inside the organization who shares content, they uh, can then share it with somebody and that other person can then share it with somebody. So before you know it, you're, you, you're losing control of your data. So you don't want to go there. Um, another one is new and existing guests. So I can invite other people. I can invite internal users. I can invite guests by using their email address. Existing guests only. So if I just pop over into the um, admin center and go into Azure Active Directory, one of the things that we see in Azure Active Directory, of course, Azure Active Directory is our core directory for everything. If I click into groups here, one of the things that I can do is I can create new guest users. These are external users outside your organization. All right. So you can see here I've got Andy Malone and I've, I've sent an email to this particular user. I have to acknowledge the receipt of that email. Uh, once I have, I can then uh, be added as a guest to a SharePoint website, a Microsoft team, an Office 365 group. Typically the rule of thumb is one to five. So for every one paid uh, subscription that you have, you can invite five people to be guests, okay? Um, only persons in your organization. So this is internal only. So th there is no sharing whatsoever with this particular uh, tab or site. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to choose existing guests only. And you can see the default sharing link type. It's picking it up from the default settings there. So I'm going to click on save there. So that was the sharing options at the site level. I mentioned at the tenant level. So for this, I expand policies and click on to sharing. And you can see here we have those four options that I just showed you for both SharePoint and OneDrive. Um, so anyone, of course, is anonymous users. Uh, existing new and existing guests so users can invite guests existing guests that only exist in 365 and only people within your organization then we have some file and folder link options so again choose the option that best fits 
your organization. It's always better just to give them what they need, not necessarily what they want. Okay. Um, okay, so those are the basic sharing settings. With access control, you can manage devices. So in here, uh, this kind of works alongside technologies like conditional access in Azure Active Directory. So you can determine unmanaged devices. So if you're not using, for example, Intune, AKA Endpoint Manager, how do you want your users' devices? Um, must users be, be registered in Microsoft 365 with their device before they can access your valuable custom uh, resources and so on. <clears throat> you can also set things like um, secure or trusted networking locations where I can only access certain websites, for example. So that is that. Um, in the settings area here, um, this is basically where you as an administrator can create or control um, your basic default uh, settings. Um, uh, again, <clears throat> you also have down here, this is called the term store. Um, and what the term store is, typically it's used for, if, if you can imagine, uh, it's used by search and, and indexing and finding content. If you can imagine Windows Explorer, you know, Windows Explorer with the folder structure, imagine that, but with just the structure. So this kind of represents the structure of your organization. And you can see here, we get some examples. So departments, let's say, for example, different job titles, and you can use this for tagging and searching. Um, so we used to, we kind of refer to this, it used to have an old name called a taxonomy, but we refer to it as a term store here. Now, if you happen to have <clears throat> um, previous versions of SharePoint or SharePoint Online or SharePoint Server even, then we have a whole set of migration tools here, which rocks. So you can, there's two main tools here. There's the cloud content migrations. So you can migrate from other providers and you've also got the SharePoint um, management tool here that you can download to a SharePoint admin site and then migrate that content in. Um, more features, these are legacy features. So it goes back to the old version of SharePoint and these are gonna be slowly kind of removed and reduced uh, over the next um, few months, I would say. So there you go, just a little bit of information on how you can create a website, how you can secure a website with permissions, um, we talked about sharing um, and I also introduce you to the concept of policies and some of the some of the tools here. Um, OK, there you have it. Microsoft SharePoint Online. What a fantastic service. And so many other products rely on it. Microsoft OneDrive, Teams, um, Office 365 Groups. If you understand SharePoint, then it's the core of Office 365 and Microsoft 365. If you've enjoyed this session, as always, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you don't miss uh, any of the videos. And of course, if you've got any comments, please feel free to leave them below. In the meantime, I'll see you next time. I'm Andy Malone. Take care. <music>